Today, I'm checking out a brand new Paul Reed Smith guitar. I am not only curious about the color, but to see how cool the new version of this Custom 24 is. That's right, you heard me say that too. Okay, so what we have is the typical PRS SE gig bag, which is a deluxe gig bag. So, let's look at the guitar. I almost, I'm almost afraid. Okay, ready? Okay, all right. I know the camera's gonna pick up different colors, but I will tell you, all right, I should also point out that this is a 10 top. <laughs> so, let's see what the camera can pick up. Now, if you're looking at the uh, camera, now I'm looking at the camera too and I'm looking in person, it, right away, if you think the new SE is more vibrant and brighter than my core, that's how it is in real life too. It's really bright. In fact, it's beautiful. And considering this uh, core is a 10 top, I cannot believe <laughs> just taking this out of the box, how amazing this looks. Now, of course, this is a veneer. It still has a mahogany body that is multiple pieces. Uh, looking at this guitar, I'm seeing three pieces right here, like they were before. We're maple neck, where on the cores, you're gonna get a mahogany neck. And of course, the mahogany, you're gonna get a quarter sawn one piece neck. And uh, the uh, SE, you're gonna get a three piece neck. And I don't know if this is spec this way or if it's just the one I received, but the center piece is quarter sawn. So the center piece of maple is a quarter sawn, and the two outer pieces are flat sawn, um, which is really cool. I've actually seen that before. In fact, usually they do that purposefully. So I'm assuming this might have been done on purpose. But again, I don't want you to get yours and be like, mine's not that way. So a three piece maple neck, rosewood fretboard, standard SE uh, uh, tuning keys. And again, you can buy the optional locking keys. It actually has a real maple cap. So it actually uses a, a quarter inch. Well, it looks thicker than that. Looks like half inch, half inch to quarter inch, just like on this one, uh, maple cap, but it's not a flame maple. And then there's a maple veneer. So there's flame veneer. So it's, it's mahogany maple and then the maple veneer. This one is light. In fact, you know, as you guys know, I like light guitars. Uh, they're the same. This is the same weight, pretty much. Of course, it has the typical SE bridge. That's not new. And uh, everything else is standard that I know about. So what is different is instead of a push-pull pot for coil splitting, you get the two mini switches, and these have the new TCI tune capacitance, inductance, pickups. What I will tell you is this. I've said it on the Paul's guitars. I've said it on every guitar I've used that since had this switching system. I really love the single coil tone, so I'm curious to see what I think of this one. But of course, what I really wanted to talk about first was this top. This thing, just looking at the camera, this one is popping. Other things to note, it has a graphite nut. The frets are nickel. They are polished. They feel great. This guitar is still made by uh, Court Tech Guitars, Court Guitars in Indonesia. Another thing that's worth noting with the new Custom 2408 SE is it has a new carve on the top. That's right. There's, uh, it's more closer to the traditional carve than before. In fact, this is, it kind of reminds me of what the S2s have, if you're familiar with the PRS S2s, where it's a little deeper on the edge. It doesn't, doesn't come back up on the end like the core does, but it feels more, more like what you would expect a PRS to feel like. In fact, probably better because it's got a little bit of the carve, the, the violin carve on it to where it really looks right, but it doesn't poke your arm. This thing always drove me crazy. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, I, I've learned to live with it over the years, this, this little edge, but man, this, this feels better. And, uh, that's really cool. So, uh, so that's another thing too. It has a deeper body carve, more of the violin carve. So they really brought the SEs up a couple notches with this model. Like I said, bringing it more into what the core specs are a little bit more features, obviously the right colors. And of course, a little bit of more carve. So this is a big deal. We're also going to go through and see how it comes out of the box. I've said this before on the core PRS guitars. To me, they come always out of the box 
with the action a little high, but when I say a little high, it's usually like specked out to where most of us that like low action can tolerate it. So, you know, they're they're notorious for saying at Paul Reed Smith that, you know, you can take it out of the box and take it right to the gig. Obviously, this guitar, uh, this would not be the action I would like, and I'm gonna measure that in a second, but uh, they are correct. I, I literally just tuned it up and I could just take it and play it on stage. Wow. Okay. So let's uh, let's actually look at that action and see what that looks like. Okay. So what we're looking at off the 12th fret is two millimeters off the E string. So that's two millimeters two millimeters between the uh, bottom of the low E string and the fret and the uh, top of the fret. And the high E is uh, 1.75 millimeters. Uh, so. Again, high, a little high. I like to also check around the third fret just to see how that looks. That's just something I like to do. Um, and there we're fine, 0.75 and 0.75. Again, that's just like how I like to do it. So what would I do in this case? Uh, well, let's look at the neck. Neck looks great. The bridge is floating. Okay, so let's look at that. So again, that's looking great. So in this case, uh, I would just actually lower each of the saddles. Um, and that would be really easy to do, just lower those. And, uh, and the reason is, is because one, I don't wanna mess with the bridge. Uh, something you need to realize uh, when you're messing with the, uh, the, uh, the PRS bridges, they have a six screw system like a traditional Strat would have, but their screws are different because they have notches cut around the base, right underneath where the Phillips head is. There's a groove cut into the actual screw. All six of these holes have a blade and all of those blades rest on those notches. So it's like a fulcrum tremolo where there's a pivot point. You know what I mean? It just goes, just like a Floyd Rose where it's just kind of anchored on that. So the reason that's important is uh, you've got to loosen the strings and loosen the springs and stuff before you turn these. Sometimes they're notorious for snapping off. That's something I've dealt with many times in the past for customers that they come in and one of the, one of the, uh, the uh, screws have snapped off, the head is snapped off because again, it has that groove cut into it. So you want to be aware of that. In this case, I like that it's floating. I like where it's set. I just would lower it a little bit. For this video, I'm not gonna lower it a little bit because it's fine. Like I said, where would I take it? To one and a half millimeters. So we're talking about half a millimeter difference in where I would like it off the 12th fret. So again, we're not talking about a bad setup, just not my preference, but that's okay. So what we're gonna do now is uh, give you some sound samples. I'm gonna start with the, the bridge pickup. We're running it through an Ingle Fireball 25 amp into a 112 V30 speaker. I have a little bit of delay uh, added in by the, uh, by the Keeley delay pedal. Let's go to the neck position. All right, that seems to be a problem. Okay, so the neck pickup is not working. And as you guys know, when I do reviews, I do it with the mentality of uh, what I'll call, play it where it lands, kind of like a golf term, right? Wherever the ball lands, you have to play it. Wherever it's happening in the videos, I have to show you. So. We have a problem where the three-way switch is not working in the neck position. So, I'm trying to see if it works. So before we decide that the switch is bad, sometimes what can happen is when the guitars are made in factories, there's a lot of dust from all the wood and sanding, and that dust gets into these electronics, and this may just need to be cleaned out. So I'm gonna grab some deoxit, we'll clean the switch out, Hopefully they'll fix it. If not, we'll see where to proceed from there. So normally I would go and do this in the shop, but uh, with Deoxit, one of the things I like about this, and I'm not sponsored by these guys at all, is that it has an adjustable 
uh, output. So you can do high to medium to low. And so I'm gonna set it on the low setting. And to do this is super easy. Uh, just put the guitar flat on your lap and just spray just a little bit in there on each side uh, of the line and let that let it drain and clean in there okay and we're going to test it right now And that fixed it. So, you know, you can buy uh, electric contact cleaner at your local auto store or on Amazon. And I've never had a problem with that per se. I've used it when in a pinch or when I was a little slim on the budget. Uh, but like I said, one of the things I like is the adjustable one. What I will tell you is if you don't have that adjustment to, to adjust down to that low setting, I wouldn't do it like I did like over a carpet or in a room like this. I would, I would take it out to your garage or outside and spray it and be aware it's gonna get kind of everywhere and just clean it up, you know, with a dry cloth, it'll be fine. Now let's try this neck pickup. So we're on the bridge again. Go to that neck pickup. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is I have it plugged into the Marshall Plexi with a Keeley's Caverns reverb in the effects loop. And I'm gonna go ahead and uh, just mess with the settings, see what kind of sounds we can get. I should also mention that I have a, uh, a uh, Shure SM57 mic on a greenback 212 cabinet. Here we go with the first position, which is gonna be the humbucker. Here we go. Neck pick up. things about having a switching system like this with two switches uh, and you can do it with two push pulls as long as you have the ability to coil split each pickup is you can put it in the middle position and get kind kind of all kinds of weird uh, uh, kind of weird possibilities of sound so I'm gonna start with just the middle position two humbuckers <laughs> This is a good time to mention that I haven't had any tuning stability issues with the guitar. For the cleans, we're gonna start with the neck position. split so it gets that spanky that's nice in fact I'm curious again now that we did the the uh, middle tone I guess with the overdrive let's do the middle tone with the amp on, on clean um, so what I'm gonna do is 
I'm actually gonna leave it exactly where it is. Uh, coil split on the neck, so we're single coil here, humbucker here. Nice. I'm just gonna switch those. And that's kind of a cool thing. You get to, you can just kind of flip them with your, with your finger and your thumb. All right, so let's go to the middle position. This is probably one of my favorite ones. And uh, so again, so basically it's custom 24 SE with the uh, mother of pearl uh, bird inlays. Just really, really good. That's gonna be tough. That's tough. So I'm excited that they did a Risa Verde in an SE model uh, and I'm not. <laughs> On that note, I'd like to thank you guys so much for hanging out with me today and checking out this new guitar, especially since we got to do a first look at it. Uh, this just came out, so you'd have to check some of the links down below if you'd like to get one or find one on your own on the internet. And as always, uh, thank you so much for your time. Till the next time, know your gear.